Hello and welcome back to Science Lectures with Zuname Games, and I'm Zuname Games. So, in this episode, I'm going to be speaking to you guys about how how lucky Earth really is to exist, especially in relevance to such topics as Armageddon or a meteorite or asteroid that could potentially hit the Earth, and why something big enough hasn't already you know pummeled a planet so many times, and exactly how lucky we are, and how many things are actually for our planet exactly how many things are against us. So, just to begin, I'm going to like go ahead and remind all of you viewers that these videos may or may not be completely accurate. So please, do not cite me in your essays. Do not put me as a final phase basis because I may or may not be wrong. And if I am, please let me know in the description below, um, in the comment section below, or on the thread. I don't mind, nor do I care. Please let me know if there is something inaccurate. Now, I'm going to go ahead and begin and say to you guys that one of the things that I find miraculous about Earth is exactly the number of defenses that we have for us. Now, you can already, I can go into the topic of um, some religious faith basis, or I can go into a completely um, scientific point of view and leave that all out alone. But regardless of your point of view and your beliefs, I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to explain that it is quite a coincidence. How our, how our solar system is set up. Beginning with, one of the biggest things that you may or may not know about is the moon. The moon is actually, if you, know, you don't even need to actually see physical, you don't need to read about it. It's physical proof. You just can look up at the moon, and the moon is completely battered with craters. Now, that isn't to say that the moon catches every crater, because we cannot forget about the one that wiped out the dinosaurs several thousands of years ago. But just because it hit us doesn't mean that all of them will because the moon is there to deflect us and another big uh, um, another big defense for us is Jupiter now you might be wondering how is Jupiter so far away protecting Earth well Jupiter is an interesting subject considering as you may or may not know it is the largest and most massive body in our entire solar system that is not the Sun it is the largest planetary body and because of that its gravitational effect is massive and if you go ahead and take a look at your old planetary chart from elementary middle school whenever you check that out the planetary order is mercury venus earth mars and jupiter now if you know anything about where the asteroid belt lays it's all over the place but it's specifically noted for being between mars and jupiter now if you go ahead and take that out as a bit of a thinking process Jupiter is obviously going to be a major draw to any asteroids that pass by it. But alternatively, so will Mars, but it's not as big of a tractor, especially considering the fact that the mass and the size of Mars um, is, it is, less than the, that, it is less than that of Earth's. So, eh, Mars isn't really as much for us as much as Jupiter, which helps draw the um, asteroid belt away from Earth. And just by doing that, the chances... Because it's all been lined up in a belt, because that's how solar systems form, if you are not aware. Solar systems form in rings, per se. That's how suns and all that kind of form, because um, a good example of this would be kind of like how you can put um, different types of water, different chemicals in water, and you can actually see, like, oils will sink below water, and water will float on top of that. Just like that. Um, the rockier, harder materials will be further from the sun while it's forming. Alternatively, the gases and stuff will be the nearest because they are more easily drawn towards this object than something that is more dense, such as rocks and such as rocks and so forth. <coughs> but Jupiter doesn't do everything. Jupiter can also slingshot asteroids and meteorites towards us. So, just because it's there does not mean it's the greatest defense in the universe. However, again, I must return to the moon. The moon, having one-sixth that of the mass of Earth, is quite significant. You may or may not realize it yourself, but one-sixth of that of Earth. Earth is one of the largest, one of the largest rocky bodies in the solar system. Venus is close, Mercury is far smaller, and Mars, as you may know, may know, is also smaller. Now, that is not to say I am uncertain as to whether or not Jupiter and the other... I'm almost... I say I'm uncertain, but I'm quite certain that there is a 
rocky surface at the core of Jupiter and the other gas giants. However, I have an odd feeling, just based on my own gut instinct, that they may or may not be bigger than that. I'm going to assume that they are. If I do some basic figuring in my head, that Jupiter, Jupiter, Neptune, Saturn's, just did that out of order, um, Uranus's, and so on, their rocky cores are probably going to be larger, if not more dense, than that of Earth. Since I believe Jupiter has like 26 times the gravity of Earth, I may be inaccurate with that one. You can go and go ahead and say that one in the section below. Um, <coughs> but still, for the rocky inner planets, just to eliminate that whole rant right there, the inner out of the inner planets, Earth is quite a dense one and quite a... Mm, well, to be perfectly honest, quite a unique one since we've been looking all over the s all over the universe and have not found one single Earth Earth-like body that would work. Because, well, to go on a separate subject, there are three requirements for there to for scientists to actually consider whether or not a planet, an Earth-like planet, could actually sustain life, not just for alien life, but also, but also human. Um, Requirement one would obviously have to be it has to have you know have an atmosphere similar to Earth's. Um, it has to have an atmosphere similar to Earth's, and that has to have water. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Next is that it has to exist in something called the Goldilocks zone. That is basically a distance from the sun where it will not be too hot nor will it be too cold and therefore be perfect for life. But those two requirements, although you find planets that do have Earth's like an Earth-like atmosphere and ones that are in the Goldilocks zone, one thing scientists have to also consider is whether or not those planets actually have an orbiting satellite, such as our moon. Because you... <laughs> the effect of our moon has on drawing away asteroids and other space debris is actually quite significant. Because there are... a lot of stuff passes through passes through our solar system, our whole solar system, not just our orbit, not just the gravitational influence of Earth or the moons, not just through that, but just through our whole solar system, because you have, you have um, flying space debris that are out beyond our reach of our solar system and just floating in between. Now, you can also, I can go into the topic of orphan planets, I believe that's the correct name, orphan planets, which are the ones that actually got slingshot, 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 whatever, that actually got slingshotted out of their solar system and I want to say out of their galaxy but I'm uncertain I want to say it's just out of their solar system and they're basically just freely floating out between different galaxies and just out in the middle of the cold and they're actually I want to say they're one of the coldest forms um, one of the coldest bodies in the entire solar system because the distance from them in any of the light is greater than that of well just about everything but that's a, that's an explanation about how the moon and Jupiter help, but something else that helps that you may or may not realize, <laughs> which I would hope you would if you've actually played with deadly reentry, which is our atmosphere. Our atmosphere, like I said, we get plenty of space debris every day. It's not a it's not a rare occurrence. It's a rare occurrence to get an Earth sized killer. That's a rare occurrence. But we get space debris all the time. Some of it's, you know, man made, but there are good bits. You can go outside, and if you're in the right area or at the right time of year, you can get meteor showers. That's that's meteorites that are hitting Earth's atmosphere and breaking up. So, <clears throat> it, it's not that it doesn't happen, it's that it does. And it's because of our atmosphere that breaks up, I want to say, 90%, again, fact check that, 90% if not more, of the debris that comes through Earth's atmosphere. And what does land is either minute, microscopic, or it actually is decently sized. But not every asteroid breaks the atmosphere. It'd have to be quite a significant, I want to say, like the size of a, tr you know, a car. No, that'd probably break up if I think of, not think of it, that'd probably break up easily within Earth's atmosphere. Because, thing is, the, ab <laughs> it would take a lot for an, a massive, well, correction, for a rock that's small, the chances of it coming in at such a perfect velocity, the chance of it coming in at such a perfect velocity is extremely finite. 
because apologize there, you may or may not hurt my phone, um, is extremely finite because it has to come in at the perfect velocity, at the perfect trajectory, and be able to either skip through our atmosphere or completely miss it, which large portions of asteroids do. But if it were to hit our atmosphere, it would have to dip in and either do like the Apollo spacecraft did, hop out and come back in, or it would have to do a it could just do a straight down dive. However, I would suggest not doing that if you were playing Girl Space Program, because anything that you may or may not have learned from Deadly Reentry is that Deadly Reentry going straight down is extremely lethal. The amount of G-forces and the amount of heating you're going to build up is significant in comparison to trying to do a skip off. Because that that managed you to slow you down in the upper atmosphere. Because the the, um, the lower and the the lower you go into Earth's atmosphere and the deeper you go, the hotter and the more dense, more meaning more friction, more air density, and more air to be compressed against your spacecraft while you're coming down, or in this case, an asteroid. And when it does hit that, just like a real spacecraft, asteroids typically break up, and once broken up. Um, they're much easier to be, um, they're able to be burnt up and destroyed a heck of a lot easier in smaller bits than having to heat an entire giant object, which is how the Earth's atmosphere works. So, in speaking back to what I originally said, you can take your own opinion on this, as to whether or not this truly is how, exactly how lucky we are. I only listed three, three things that are for us, our moon, Jupiter, and our atmosphere. But you have to realize, we're looking all over the solar system. We occasionally do find a planet that has our atmosphere. Well, that's good for living on it. But does there, is there something, in the, something else in that solar system to protect that planet and be able to keep all the other major space debris, you know, other planets maybe, from getting too close? Is there anything to stop that? There is no gar there is no guardian or there's nothing to stop that. That's not always there as well. And lastly, something that makes it far more difficult than just finding other of those three places, including finding the perfect Goldilocks zone, is whether or not it has an orbiting satellite, or at least one capable of removing and deflecting incoming space debris. Those three things are something that you may find but you will almost never find all three together. We have found a few, but not many. So this should just give you a just give you a small feeling to yourself exactly how lucky we are to be here. I don't care if you are religious, and if you are, you can go to your religion and you can understand, you can respect, you can that should be one more reason to strengthen in your faith, is to understand exactly whatever created you, and why ever they did, did a job better than any other. Or if you, are sci if you are a person of science, that you should understand and you should respect the powers that is of just nature. The way things work, y the way things work, you gotta understand that the powers, if you are, sci if you are a scientific minded person, that the powers putting this, sis this solar system and our, just our whole ability to make life, you've got so much against us. Because the chances of finding all of this just to make one livable planet, I personally, Zunane Games myself, personally, I do believe that there is life out there somewhere beyond the planets, beyond our solar system, beyond Earth. However, I do not think that they're going to be coming in the form of green aliens. I truly do believe that there is life, but however, I do not believe that that life will be able to even speak. It will live, but it will not be sentient. I'm thinking that we may find some strange fungi. Maybe a, maybe a green forest. But the possi we may be lucky enough to actually find an ecosystem. Something with predators and prey. Stuff like that. But I'm figuring that we're only going to find foliage, only greenery, only greenery. We will not find other life because the chan because again, the chances are against us to find such a planet, such a place, and the chances, even if it did exist, the chances of it evolving again are against. 
So that is my opinion, and that is my explanation for this episode on Earth in its ways to deflect asteroids. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, or if you want to see more of our videos, or if you want to see any video on KSP, please hit the subscribe button to KMC TV. We really do try hard, understanding that we don't always get videos out as fast as we could, but we try. Um, if you want to see more of the series, again, let me know. Click, like, comment, whatever. Um, you can also go to the thread, again, listed at the bottom. This is just a pilot episode, you could say. Just just getting this out there. If you guys want me to continue, go ahead. If you, I can make anywhere, I guess, I can make up to two or three. I would, I want to say that three would be pushing it, but up to three videos a week. But I would, if you guys wanted me to, I could probably push for two, two videos per week, and you guys can enjoy it if you like this. So, like I said, go ahead and let me know in the section below, and I'll see you next time, guys.